Pat here from Dead Things, and I am at the orifice, or the office, and uh, I'm working on a scissor mechanism today, um, a la Widowmaker. Uh, mine is going to be a little bit different. I'm going to use some, try using some different components, and uh, mine's going to be uh, mounted to or sit on the ground, not in a chair. Uh, so a little bit di different from Widowmaker's. If you haven't seen Widowmaker Productions, um, Scissor Mac, go check it out. It is absolutely fantastic. So uh, so check it out. This is going to I'm going to actually make this video um, with no editing, as it were. Um, because I'm going to be using a couple of different components, um, mainly a slider, drawer slider, uh, as opposed to um, what, uh, what Widowmaker uses, which is a, a PVC. I'm going to try it out. Now, I've looked at this drawer slider and I do have some um, concerns about it. So basically, as I build this, I'm going to just, I'm not going to edit. I'm going to show you the process that I go through. <laughs> and uh, and then we'll go from there. So first off is I built a base and welded it together one inch square uh, 16 grade uh, or 16 gauge uh, tubing uh, one inch square and it's all welded and I believe two feet and this distance here is I believe uh, 16 inches if it isn't, I will show what the correct measurements are right about here. So, okay, now I've cut this piece of one inch square stock, and that is going to be welded like that. And you can see it's at an angle, and that angle is exactly eyeballed. <laughs> uh, I don't know what, it, what that angle is. Um, Basically, that's what I did. I eyeballed it. So how this is going to occur is then that is going to be welded. Drill a couple of holes through there. This then is going to slide over top like that. And so it'll sit at about I don't know, that angle, more or less, um, which I would guesstimate to be about oh, 15 degrees, perhaps, maybe a little less off of uh, off of uh, 90 so because I want this thing kind of coming up at an angle towards people since it's going to be on the ground so I'm going to uh, probably cut this down a little bit probably cut it down to about there and then uh, get it all welded up okay so there it is it's welded on and that is the angle that uh, that's going to be coming off of them just to show you, since I have a square here. So it's probably a little more. It's probably closer to about well, between 15 and 20 degrees off of uh, off of plumb. So there it is. So the last couple little bit more welding I'm going to do. I'm going to put a little tab of this stock on the back so that I can put a, an outrigger, as it were, a back piece on there for uh, just for kickback because um, I want this thing to move quick so when it goes back I don't want it to, to flip over on itself. So I'll put an outrigger back here. Um, that'll also allow me, if I feel I need to, if I don't think that this is going to be strong enough to take that kickback, um, to put a uh, bracing on there. So that's the next little bit of uh, welding. One more do. thing I want to show you before I go too far is that before I do any welding, I pre-drill the parts that are going to be joined together. For instance, this this piece here is going to be welded on this piece here is going to slide in and be the outrigger. So I pre-drill these on the drill press before I weld it. That way I, uh, I know that I've, well for one thing, I've got a straight drill through, the pieces are going to fit, and I'm not in some awkward thing trying to drill. I mean, can you imagine trying to drill that on a drill press? It would be just a nightmare. So pre-drill the parts, make sure you have enough clearance, and then go from there. And what I do is I stick a the appropriate size 
bolt through there to drill out the other hole. Now these, this hole in here was already pre-drilled, so what I'm doing is I'm then flipping it over and drilling through that side there just to make sure that everything is all hunky-dory and square. Um, yeah, sometimes, and I don't know if it's just me and others can maybe weigh on, seems when I drill on a drill press, it isn't always straight. And it's probably because I'm getting a little rammy and just trying to push the drill through instead of letting the drill do the, do the work. So, anyways, that's how I do that. Okay, that's it as it stands now. So, this piece is removable. And this piece is removable. Probably what I'm going to do on the end of this is put a T like that. Um, and I may leave it that long, you know. That's probably not a bad idea to have it that long. That way I've got lots of, uh, lots of surface for, for this to not be able to kick back over. So that's where it is right now. Now I'm going to go on to the drilling of the uh, scissor mechanism. And I'm going to be following uh, Widowmaker's whole, whole thing with that in that setting up a jig, making sure everything is all locked in, uh, drilling all my center, switching things around, setting up the, resetting the jig, and drilling again. So, uh, so that's where I'm going to do. I don't, I'm not going to film it. Um, I may film the beginning of the jig and the end, but Greg Widowmaker Productions did a really good job of, of showing that and uh, refer back to his video if, if you want. You should be looking at his stuff anyways. Okay, there are the pieces. They are 16 inches long and uh, all the holes are drilled out into them and I've also ground down the uh, the areas where I uh, where I drilled um, when you're drilling metal you get little burrs so incidentally um, if you're going to be working with oh holy crow what the heck happened there oh there we go if you're going to be working with metal on a uh, regular basis there's some things that you you're you're gonna need um, a drill press. Drill press is essential. Um, drilling into metal can be difficult for those who haven't done it before. Um, it usually takes a quite a bit of force to to be able to cut through it, uh, and a drill press gives you that mechanical advantage. It's also typically very straight. Um, as if you got everything lined up and tightened up and and everything, you'll get a nice plumb. Um, hole, especially if you're trying to drill through two surfaces like square tubing for example. Um, one of the other things that's essential is that which is a grinding wheel. Um, you can also, you can get a couple of different blades for it. This is a grinding disc. You can also get a cutoff wheel which is again um, just makes uh, going through this, uh, cutting through metal, um, quick and efficient and typically straight. Sometimes using a hacksaw isn't the easiest way. I have the luxury of uh, having one of these at my disposal, which is a, uh, a metal cutoff saw, chop saw. So, uh, you know, we can get very quick, accurate cuts with it. The other thing that's absolutely essential is a face shield. And earmuffs are a bad idea as well. Um, a face shield, you know, these things throw off sparks. Metal throws off sparks, throws off bits of metal as you're grinding it off. So it's important to uh, to have your your face protected. Safety first, kids. Okay, here are the components. We have the 25 by 200 mil cylinder, double acting cylinder. Two ports here, so that's double acting. It is it's about an eight inch stroke and a one inch bore. This is the slide mechanism. This is a 
What is it? That's what it is. Full extension ball bearing drawer slide. Okay. So, just to show you, that's how that's going to go. And then, of course, the scissor mac. So I think how I'm going to have it is that when it's in its fully extended position, everything is going to be um, drawn back up into the slide because that's going to give it the most stability. Okay, so when it's in its most closed position, this is going to be extended like that. So, um, I guess what I gotta do is I gotta build a couple of tabs here. One for this, one for that. And uh, build up some, some tabs so that this and this can be attached onto here. This is what I've come up with for the, um, the mechanism that is going to hold solid um, the uh, actuate the the cylinder and the um, the stationary part of the scissor mech so basically I've drilled holes um, you see it's a piece of uh, quarter inch flat stock and I've drilled larger hole into it which means I'm gonna have to drill a larger hole into one of those um, those uh, pieces of three-quarter on the on the scissor three-quarter the scissor is going to sit in the middle here and then um, the uh, the cylinder will sit on the outside so that's where I'm at right now I'm gonna put it all together and see if it's gonna work before I um, weld it 